there isn't a lot of science ROVs out there. And even those other science ROVs have been built kind of, they've more been evolved from other vehicles. So we had the opportunity to kind of start from scratch and kind of maybe do something a little bit different. It's a challenge to start with a blank slate of paper and just start drawing a frame and, you know, seeing what comes out at the end. We started off with a concept design an ideal version of how they would want the vehicle to look. Slowly you kind of get to a design that you're happy with and that you can start developing in a little bit more detail and things start fitting in around it. Then we went to the preliminary design phase where we started getting into a little bit more of the analysis to prove out the concepts and to kind of flush out what was realistic. Then when we went on to the detailed design review we were able to hone in a bit more on um, how the, the vehicle should be structured and where all the pieces will go and how it will fit together. We're still in the design process but we're focusing on the smaller parts of the design now. So the big picture elements are fixed because they're already being made. We're concentrating um, electrically on the details of the electrical design, the grounding of serial ports and ensuring that every, every necessary wire has been run. We've slowly been getting components into the shop here. It's all filled with boxes. As soon as the frame gets here, we can start mounting thrusters, pumps, submotors, valve packs, and all sorts of things. In terms of parts, I've put in about 130 purchase orders. We've probably purchased about 5,000 different pieces. We fairly closely scrutinized the command and control systems designs when they're operating the vehicle. So you can see the path that the vehicle has taken over the sea floor. We've got two different types of sonar. The first sonar is a forward-looking multi-beam imaging sonar displaying the distance and the acoustic response from objects in front of the vehicle. We also have a scanning sonar used for collision avoidance. And that becomes especially important if it's muddy or silty down underneath there. It also rolls in acoustic positioning from the surface. The inertial navigation system combines all of these sources of information to most accurately determine the vehicle position. When I get to see it all put together right in front of me, it'll really start to come together. Those guys are super skilled, you know, they're on the top of the game, um, highly competent, super creative, you know, and um, you can't, you can't put, put a lid on that. You've got to let that just fester and and go.